as I hit, sit here today and start a brand new chapter on earthquakes, um, there's been devastation in Haiti. Um, uh, in here in 2010, early 2010, there was a, a horrible earthquake that uh, rocked uh, Haiti. And as I saw this morning, as I was running on my treadmill, um, there were uh, approximately 200,000 people who died in near and uh, in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And so earthquakes are kind of an important topic. And in interestingly enough, they're very important just in today's discussion. So we're beginning a chapter learning about how earthquakes form, what's in them. Uh, it's very intriguing to kind of figure this out. So actually, let's start with a video clip, and in this video clip, it's, a, it's about the Haitian earthquake. When you look at the devastation in Haiti's capital city, there is no doubt that this was the big one, a quake so strong that just 10 minutes later, the seismic waves registered here in the Caltech lab in Pasadena, California, 3,009 miles away. Well, it's unusual to have big waves like that coming in. I mean, we don't see that every day. We don't, we don't even see it every month. Caltech scientists monitor seismic activity and say Haiti is in a very active area of the world. In fact, the Caribbean islands were created by earthquakes. Eight quakes of seven magnitude or greater have struck the area in the past 220 years. Haiti is surrounded by two major plates that are pushing on a fault line that runs from Jamaica through southern Haiti. On Tuesday, that fault finally broke, causing the two plates to slip past each other along an approximately 40-mile stretch of the earth. The ground shook so violently because the rupture was so close to the surface, within just eight miles. The seismic energy of the seven-magnitude earthquake is the same as 32,000 small atomic bombs. Scientists believe the quake was so large because pressure has been building up in the fault ever since the last major earthquake hit here 240 years ago. Scientists warned the island was primed for another megaquake. In fact, in 2008, five scientists issued a paper predicting a 7.2 magnitude quake along this fault. They say the risk of another large quake still exists. By releasing strain on one part of the fault, you actually increase strain on adjacent parts of the fault thereby making them more susceptible to a large earthquake. The fault under Haiti is the same type as the San Andreas Fault, the 800-mile-long scar slicing through California. Pressure has been building in the southern end near Los Angeles for more than 300 years. Scientists say the so-called big one here is not a matter of if, but when. Now here at the Caltech lab, they have this simulation of a 7.8 magnitude quake hitting downtown Los Angeles. Scientists here believe there's a 99.7% chance that a 6.7 or greater magnitude quake will hit Southern California in the next 30 years. A sobering prediction. Harry. Ben Tracy, thanks. Wow, quite an earthquake, wasn't it? So earthquakes are an important topic. Uh, here in Colorado, we don't have a huge threat of earthquakes, but worldwide earthquakes can be a very significant thing. Well, we're gonna talk and about some, talk today about some geo words. What are some words you wanna learn about, okay? We're gonna talk about earthquake and seismic waves. What's a fault, the focus and the epicenter, primary waves, secondary waves, and surface waves. So we're gonna talk about all these things. So let's kinda get at it. Well, an earthquake, well, it's when the earth shakes. So for some reason, and we'll talk about later, the earth moves. And as the earth moves, it can shake things. In particular, the danger in earthquakes, when we worry about that 200,000 people, if you get trapped in a building and the building collapses upon you, so if you're somebody sitting in this building, uh, or actually I think it's this building right here that crashed uh, significantly, you, you've got a problem. Uh, you could definitely be hurt or certainly killed. Here we have an earthquake right here, and you can see how something has collapsed an entire, if you're in a car, you're probably crushed. So it can be very bad. All right, the second word I want to talk about is the word fault. Fault. Now, fault is kind of a line in the earth where, uh, well, the earth moves. So if you kind of look here, this particular piece of rock right here used to be down here. So that means this piece of rock has moved up, and this piece of rock has moved down. That is a fault line. Okay, this is kind of where the earthquakes take place. We'll learn more about that as we progress. This one's an interesting one right here, is that we can see this band right here, they used to be joined in together. So this has been uplifted, and this has been down lifted or pushed down. And interestingly enough, though, that there's no fault line up here. It does not continue here. We'll learn more about that in a subsequent chapter, but the key thing here is this stuff happened much, much later. So this rock right here, this top rock, this top rock was placed 
on top of it after the fault. So the fault is quite ancient in this particular example. Okay, now let's look at something called the focus and the epicenter. Two words, you should define both of these words. But um, the focus is where the earthquake occurs, where it gets started. And it's typically deep underground, okay? And the um, epicenter is the place above it, so directly above the focus is where the epicenter is. But technically the movement is happening deep under the earth. It doesn't typically happen on the surface of the earth, etc. Okay, so that's important. Let's do a little um, animation of this. So here I have an animation. Let me get it started. Here we have a, a focus. The earthquake occurs. There's the epicenter. And then there's the mo motion of the, of the substance. Let's do that again. Let's replay that. Look how it goes. There you go. And there, and there's a fault plane. You can see these things called seismic waves. Let's play that again. Watch the seismic waves. That's the waves coming out. The waves are what cause the destruction, which we'll talk about a bit later. Now let's look at the different kinds of seismic waves. Turns out there's actually three varieties of seismic waves. There are P waves. There are S waves. Actually, there are four waves. And then there are surface waves. Actually, so surface waves can be broken down into two varieties. Or actually, you can think of surface, surface waves and body waves. Uh, the body waves are P waves, and then these are S waves. The surface waves are either these kind of waves, low waves, uh, or Raleigh waves. Okay? So um, one is compressional. Well, let's, let's, I think we'll look at them each. So what is a primary wave? Okay? P, P, by the way, stands for primary. First of all, a primary wave is a compressional wave. Okay? Let's watch an animation that illustrates this. Now, when we look at this, uh, uh, we're going to watch a little video clip here. I want to. Uh, we're going to watch the four kinds of waves. The first is primary wave. The primary wave is a compression, kind of like a slinky. Do you see that? How it goes like that. Now, this will be what's called the S wave. It moves like that. You see the wave propagation. It's kind of squiggly. And then the love wave. Okay, how it kind of pushes that way. And the Raleigh wave. You can see. All right. So what I'd like you to do is, I'll, I'll play that again. Um, is I want you to. Um, t uh, draw a quick picture of each kind of wave. All right. Now let me push play. See, that's the P wave. It's compression. Here comes the S wave. So it's a it's a secondary wave, by the way, it stands for. And then here is the love wave. See how it s slides and bends the Earth. And this is where you're going to get this loopy thing, and you create kind of the waves of the Earth. So make sure you probably have to pause the video several times as you're working through um, drawing these pictures. And so of course we've already kind of seen the idea of what a surface or a secondary wave is. So uh, let's go ahead and define the secondary wave. I'll pull it up as a call out so you understand the concept here. And then of course there's the surface waves. Again, there's two kinds of surface waves. Turns out really the surface waves are the most damaging of all the waves. Those are the ones that are going to cause the buildings to get destroyed.